Okay. I have kind of recovered from this, uh, <laughs> all the uh, excitement uh, this afternoon. Um, what I have done is I have separated all 31 babies. I've put, uh, let's see, I have six in uh, each tub times four for a total of 24 babies. And then the middle tub there, I have seven in there to make 31. Uh, for now, i got to clean this room. I kind of trashed it today with all the chaos. Um, I have the mom, Farah, who's resting comfortably in her cage. Uh, I was able to clean out most, try to get most of the slime out so she wouldn't be laying in it. Uh, threw some more newspaper down, put some water in there for her. Um, I didn't want to try to extract her tonight. Uh, I wanted to give her some time to relax because she was really on high uh, mommy protection mode. If I tried to take her out of there, she would have struck at me. Uh, so that's why I actually have the cage covered up. Um, I'm kind of going to do things in reverse here just because it's going to take me a while to edit the, uh, the other footage. So this is what I'm going to film first is what you're going to see. I mean, this video here. Um, so I'm going to show you the babies first to get that posted tonight and then I'll edit the uh, the birth video and all that stuff and try to get that up tomorrow. What you're seeing here is those are the two slugs, the unfertilized uh, ova, and then you're seeing uh, looks like uh, two preemies here, two premature babies. They kind of look like they're going to be albino, but it's impossible because Farah uh, she's not a double head sunglow, she's just a super salmon, and Thor the albino is just an albino as far as I know. So. Uh, basically, these are underdeveloped, and that's why there's no color. So they look kind of like an albino, but that's because the uh, developmental process stopped uh, way back when. So what you it's weird, you know, you've got one here, one here, the head looks almost perfectly developed. And then you've got, this is the, you know, where, that's the yolk, where the uh, baby lives, baby feeds off of that. So that's that. I'm not going to show you the mom right now because she's pissed off and I don't want her smacking the glass. So but what we will do is we'll show you some of the bubbas. And I've kind of decided to put them in this Vision 400 for the time being so they stay in a really good temperature. The mom was supposed to go in there originally, um, but I'm not going to take her out till tomorrow. I'll clean her cage and put her back. So uh, usually I get a picture of of all the babies in a big mass, and this time I guess I can do a still from the camera because I didn't do my digital camera uh, work this time. So right now what we have, we have six babies and they all look good. Of course with uh, hypos, you know, they, the color comes in uh, after a while. That one's got like a stripe on the tail, that's pretty slick. Uh, I'm trying to keep them moist because uh, I don't want them to dry out. Try to keep them moist. So I put them on wet paper towel and uh, that'll keep them moist. So right there we've got uh, the first part of the litter. They all look good. I don't have any uh, any runts. Last year I had two runts. They both made it. And they're doing fine now, last I heard with their new owners. Uh, I don't see anything that looks like a runt. Okay, this is going to be the second section here. Let's get these guys back in there. I just want to make sure that their temperature stays good. It's in the mid-80s in there. And here is the second pack of little hellions. Another pack of six. Uh, basically what I'm going to do as of tomorrow I'm going to go in and make sure that all the old egg masses are gone. I'm going to get rid of them, change the paper towel. Um, you can see right here, that's an umbilical cord. And that's going to dry up and most likely, uh, not most likely, it'll definitely uh, draw back up into the stomach of the baby. So what I usually do, because I don't want them dragging around this big umbilical cord, is I'll cut it off maybe tomorrow. I'll, I'll cut it off about, uh, I'll leave about a quarter of it, the rest will be gone, and it'll dry up and fall off. So right now, though, the idea, none of these guys are nippy. Last year, with 
Mr. Clint's babies, they, some of them had his award-winning personality right out of the gate. These guys have been awesome. So hopefully they know, they know who, uh, who's going to be taking care of them here. So that's the second load. Get a little look at, uh, Trinity, the, uh, uh Tiger Albino, uh, retic who just did a massive poop. Lovely. Never, never, never stop cleaning when it comes to having all this stuff, I'll tell you. All right, uh, so those are the first two. I don't even know why I have water in here. I guess that's where the mom is going to go. Maybe it'll help with some humidity. So mainly I just want the stuff in here for the sake of uh, good, good temps, because I got, I got heat under the cage. All right, number three. Hey. Forgot to congratulate the father. Way to go, Thor. Good job, bud. Come here, buddy. I need to give you a, a snake cigar. Thor produced 31 healthy babies. All double head sun glow. This is the man of the hour right here. Good job, bud. I'll give you a nice juicy uh, rabbit in a couple days. Looks like you're getting ready to, uh, to eat again. Oh, here you come. Say hello to all the YouTubers. Say... Thank you very much. I know I'm a stud. 31 healthy babies. Thank you very much. Job done. So, awesome. He's a wonderful snake. And I, oops, this stupid AP900 cage loves to get stuck. Okay, so anyway, where were we? Yes, back to the babies again. But we had a look at the dad, and he's all excited, you can tell. <laughs> he doesn't care. Okay, so here's another six. Got some interesting patterns, some, some light, some dark. Looks like a typical pharaoh litter. You don't really know a whole heck of a lot about anything right away. It takes a little bit of time, but... Oh, I'm sorry, this is seven. This is the tub with seven in it. So... I'm going to get myself all gooey. But you can see... See all the... This is this egg mass that came off. And it's still attached to this umbilical cord. And this poor little thing's going to... Get some scissors and cut it now. Here we go. I just let's see if I can cut it with my fingernail. There we go. The idea is we don't want Mr. Little Baby to be dragging this thing around, you know, and cause any kind of problems internally for it. I don't sex him for a few days. The way I do sexing, knock on wood, I don't pop and I don't probe. What I do, and I'll have to probably do a video on that, but. I flip them over and I run my, my index finger down their vent. And if it's a male, especially when they're this young and they don't have any muscle control down there, if it's a male, you're going to feel a bump, bump like a little speed bump. And it's the safest way to, to uh, sex them because you're not popping the hemipenes, you're not doing anything like that. And this little monkey's trying to climb out of here. Get back in there. So, um... Uh, so that's the way I do the sexing, and I have never had it, uh, see, I just broke off, I just broke off this egg mass for this little guy. Look at you. This is like an instinctive thing. It's like in the wild, they need to disperse, they need to get into the jungle, and they need to, um, they're not going to eat for a little bit, but they need to basically get, you know, get under cover. So a lot of these guys instinctively are going to try to move away. All right, so there is the third batch. This is a, this is a seven count. So we got 6, 6, that's 12, plus 7. There's 20, 